as we've been using PowerView in this series, we've been using it within a web browser from a SharePoint site. Let's talk about exporting that PowerView report from PowerView and either printing it or moving it into other applications. Basically, there are two ways to pull PowerView reports out and use them somewhere else. So if we start with a PowerView report, we can just print that. That will print a page per view. And the print quality is, is quite excellent. So if you are printing PowerView reports, you're going to be very happy with those. The second way to pull information out of PowerView and use it offline or outside of the web browser is to export that to PowerPoint. This will probably be more common than using the printer for most people. And when we export to PowerPoint, we can consume that in two different ways. And we're going to talk about that and, and what software is required and what the user experience is going to look like. The first is as a static presentation. So in a static presentation, of course, we're just going to see what those views looked like when the PowerView report was saved. So if we had clicked on a certain slicer or selected a filter in a certain way, that's what's going to be on the page. That's probably going to work in a lot of scenarios where you just want to present your case or your ideas and that's it. This is also the only option you really have if the end user who's going to consume your PowerPoint deck doesn't have any connectivity back to the original data source. The second thing that PowerView can do is give us an interactive version of that presentation, which is quite very interesting. So think of this as being able to really interact and use the filters that we put on our PowerView report, but doing that right from within PowerPoint. But first, the static presentation, what's going to happen when we do this? We are going to start with our PowerView report, of course. We'll export that to PowerPoint and we'll get a PPTX file, which is a PowerPoint 2010 file. And next, the user is going to open that PowerPoint file. And within that PowerPoint file will be static images of what that report looked like, every page of it, the last time it was saved. There will be a reference to the Silverlight 5 alternative hosting control, which this user may or may not have available on their workstation. So in the case the user doesn't have that on their workstation, they will get no Silverlight control interaction. They may get an error message, and they will be able to see, though, the graphics the way they were the last time the report was saved. If they do get an error message, this is the one they're going to get. It will be the error message that says some controls can't be activated. Uh, this might not be registered on the computer. So if you get this kind of a um, feedback from a user you sent the report to, you can just tell them that that's okay. This just means that You'll, you're just going to see the report as it was last saved. You won't be able to interact with it. And when they do interact with it, they'll see the visuals the way they were when they were last exported. On the interactive presentation, we'll start with the same PowerView report. We'll export it to PowerPoint exactly the same way. The user will open it in exactly the same way. But in this case, the Silverlight 5 alternative hosting control is there, and the user can actually go ahead and interact with it. When PowerPoint finds the, the interactive hosting control, it will enable a small button, which I'll show you, that says interact. And when, when the user clicks on the interaction button, then that Silverlight really kind of takes over the presentation within the context of PowerPoint and will query the backend data model so that we can click on slicers and, and uh, filters in order to have a more interactive experience with the presentation. And we'll, we'll take a, a look and see how that works. So let's go and kind of do some of these things and see how it looks. We'll go back to the library where we've been working. And I'm going to just run one of these multi-page Power Pivot reports. So here I have a report. I can see the first page. If I click on this little icon down here, I can see I have the other pages. And they're all there. So now what I'm going to do is export this. Now I could go ahead and print that. Uh, printing is just what the way printing always works. So we have a print dialog, print comes out on paper. We won't bother much with that. Let's go and export this to PowerPoint. So I'm going to export this to PowerPoint. I'll just call this test PowerPoint. Save that. Exporting, cancel. You can see how it loads every page and exports that. Now I'm going to take a look at that. I'll just minimize these windows. There it's the file that we saved. It's only 815 kilobytes. It's not very big. If I double click on that, then I can see my three pages. Let's go into presentation mode. 
Now in presentation mode, I can see the reports, and if I want to, I can switch from page to page, and these are the static views. Whether a user has Silverlight 5 or not, or connectivity, they can do this much, no problem. What I can do if I have the Silverlight 5 alternative hosting control and I have connectivity to the infrastructure where, where these reports are hosted, I can interact with that. So I'm going to click on this interact button down here and you can see the Silverlight uh, is thinking as it's connecting to the data source. And then my report has now been refreshed from the database. So if I click on some of these interaction areas I can actually see within PowerPoint that my view is quite interactive. One last thing I want to show you is if you do get that error message, so this error message here that says it's not activated, you just need to install Silverlight on that workstation. And if I go to that site, to the silverlight.net site, and then click on the downloads link here, you see that Silverlight latest ver at this time, latest version is 5. And the pieces that you're going to really be looking for are your runtime environments. And note that runtime is available in 32-bit. It's available in 64-bit. And this bitness is going to bite you a little bit because your browser is probably running in 32-bit, even if you're running a 64-bit operating system. And so when you installed Silverlight the first time, you probably installed the 32-bit runtime for end users. If you are, like me, running the 64-bit version of Office here, that means that when PowerPoint launches, it's going to look for the 64-bit version of the Silverlight components, which you didn't download from your web browser. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and download this, download and install a 64-bit and user runtime, whether you're a developer or end user, download the right one. That's exporting and using from PowerPoint, so give that a try. I think you'll like it.